I really like that fish that he's not a sky blue. I'm going to set them aside. Gently release them. Make sure there are no fry in the bucket. That's tough. Mm, I don't know. I want to look at both those again. We'll run the net around. There's still possibly fish in here. That's the fry in here. Like this, like that fish, produce the best males. These females have too much gold in them and end up producing uh, gold males instead of sky blue males. And gold. Okay, this morning we're doing the second batch of fish that we processed after the winter storm. Uh, we reconstituted a breeding colony. Looks like we had three males, 11 females, and 15 what we call BRUs, breeders unsexed, that I thought were likely females. We'll find out how good I was at that in a little bit. What we've done so far, we had a vat of uh, two to three inch fish, actually one to, to three inch fish. Uh, we had a breeder vat, 300 gallon breeder vat. Then we had a 55 gallon vat with, uh, what, 54 BRUs. Those are fish that are three to four inches long, not yet uh, reliably sexable, and fish that we might use as future breeders. And we had a vat with 32 adult males and a vat with 66 adult females. Uh, we've, those four 55s, we've already netted out and, and done most of the sorting. And let's take a look here. Oh, so come here. Just a second, I need to check, see what Oso's at. Okay, we had a break because I had to go see what the dogs were barking at, Maya was barking at, Oso was in the greenhouse. Uh, whatever it was, was gone by the time I got out there, but her bark indicated a snake and the way they were sm smelling around, it was probably a snake, most likely a Texas rat snake. Uh, a rattlesnake would have stayed and rattled at them. Okay, so we, We've processed these fish and have done some sorting. This is a, uh, some young males that I'm going to go through in a little bit to select potential breeders. These are, I've sorted in these two buckets, this one, Susie, and this one, are females uh, that I've sorted. Yeah, let's see how to explain this. Uh, this is sky blue OBs that we're doing, uh, sky blue OB peacocks. And what I've found is that dull females, kind of silvery females, and we see a bunch of fry in there, like this, like that fish, produce the best males. These females have too much gold in them and end up producing uh, gold males instead of sky blue males. So I've sorted those two out, and I'm going to uh, do replacement breeders out of this bat right here with the the silvery fish. And these are some off-color fish. A couple of those females would uh, be good uh, blue OBs. I've discovered by watching uh, the proportion of different colors that we get out of our peacock strains, especially the OBs, which females are best for which color male. Like say the kind of silvery uh, females are best for sky blue males. The gold females are best for uh, gold OB and orange OB males. And the dark uh, mottled fish are best for blue OB. Uh, okay, then we've got some juveniles here that'll be size sorted a little bit later. This is a bucket that's got a bunch of fry that the females split and spit. Here are some, uh, these are our adult males I need to sort through. And here, let's pick some up. These are sky blues. These I'm going to move over to uh, our gold OB vat because they're more gold uh, than sky blue. And then these are some miscellaneous fish. This is an interesting male. I've got to think about what I'm going to do with him. Whether I put him in with sky blues or start a new strain based on him. I like the orange fins on him. Uh, okay, I probably violated uh, two director's instructions this morning. I'm supposed to count to, it's either three or five when we're showing a fish. 
so y'all can see them better and I didn't do that. I'll try to remember. So what we're going to do now is go over and I'm going to show how we clean a 55 gallon vat. Those of you who've watched our videos know that we don't really, we don't clean the 300s. They usually have two to three inches of mold in them. Uh, we leave that alone. It's just too much labor to clean and, and it's loaded with beneficial bacteria. The 55 gallon vats, we try to get some of them all out because it tends to collect in those because we don't have uh, big placosma stirring it up. Uh, remarkable thing about our system is that mom disappears once it gets into the gutters and the sumps. It gets broken down by fish action, all the feral fish, uh, especially the, the feral uh, placostomus, and it just kind of disappears. We don't, we, it doesn't accumulate in the floor gutters or in the, in the sump, but it does accumulate in the 55 gallon vats, especially if we don't have a lot of fish in there. So what we've done here, this is a siphon. We've uh, netted the fish out of this vat. This was one housing to one to three inch fish. Uh, and we use this siphon to siphon it. You'll notice a T on the end, and that is to prevent a fish from getting stuck up against there. If a fish happens to get across, uh, against this end, there's still water flowing in here and there's not suction holding it. If you just have the end of it, you can end up losing some uh, valuable fish by they get, they get sucked up against it and damaged and even killed. Okay, so I've got a couple empty five gallon buckets here. I have two, two 10 inch nets. This is a 10 inch brine shrimp net. It's a fine net that's used for uh, collecting brine shrimp. This is a coarse fish net. And if anybody complains about this net being dirty, uh, they can go read uh, my, or view my previous rants about cleaning. Uh, how we, I'm not gonna go through that rant. You can go to, uh, to a previous uh, video and see my rant about people who complain about things being dirty. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is run the net around there's still possibly fish in here. So I want to show that this is the mom that I'm getting out. And I'm going to get quite a bit of it out of this because this had little fish in it that don't stir up the mom very much. I'm running my hand through just to check for any fish that were missed in the netting. I'm just going to continue doing this until I get these two buckets filled. Then I'm going to leave the remaining mom in the uh, vat because it's loaded with paramecium and beneficial bacteria. The little fish can eat the paramecium. Some cyclops in there too. Some planaria. Although the fish seem to eat the planaria so fast that they don't get a chance to reproduce. Except for in our scud vats. And this is a process that we did with you know, the other three 55s that were housing this uh, variety of peacock. Uh, the others had large fish in it and didn't get nearly as much mom out of it. You see, we're starting to get less and less mom with each netting. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill these buckets up. And what we'll do is let the mom settle to the bottom of the buckets, pour the water off, and then take the mom and put it on our litter worm beds to get converted into some really, really good garden soil. I'm almost done with this. And Susie did a good job of netting this one out because I'm not getting any fish. Normally, uh, Stormy will be doing this, but he's got pickup trouble, pickup problems this morning. So she's working on her pickup. She didn't make it in. Okay, this I'll do one more. Getting diminishing returns here. I'm going to run through with a coarse net because uh, the back pressure from the, the mom blocking the, uh, 
brine shrimp net allows some fish to escape, whereas the coarse net, the mom goes through and there's no back pressure. So I'm just going to run it around a few times. And I got a fish. So I'm going to get some water to put it in. Good, that uh, demonstrated the, the uh, technique here, the reason I do this. And that seems to be it. Okay, I'm going to take this fish. This fish was a one to three inch fish when we processed these things in late February. It's now a young male. It will probably go, I'll probably put it in the BRUs since it's not colored up ready to sell, but he will be soon. Okay, well, we're going to take a break now so that I can, uh, and what I'm going to do while we're on break, I'm going to uh, pick out of the uh, good males, uh, the ones that are good uh, sky blues, I'm going to pick four or five potential breeders. Uh, to look at again, and we're going to put up the females that uh, that I've already rejected as breeders, and we're going to put up uh, the BRUs. I need to add some water to this bucket over here. I just noticed, uh, and we'll put up the uh, males that are going to get transferred to the Gold OB uh, group, and then. I'll break down the 300 and, and uh, we'll show you going through breeders, see how good I was at selecting uh, young females last time and see what reproduction we've had. There's a whole lot of fry that these females are, are releasing now. They're ready to go. Uh, they don't spit eggs, but they will if the fry are ready to be released and we're processing them, uh, they will release the fry. Maya, come here. Say hi to viewers. Come here. Turn around, say hi. Cooperate, Maya. Man, he's old. Okay, we'll see y'all in a little bit. Okay, we're back finishing up the uh, Sky Blue OB Peacocks with the help of the doggies, Oso and Maya. I call Maya Mia sometimes, that's her nickname. Oso is, really thinks his name is Noso combination no and also. Uh, what we've done, now I'm going to aerate some fish here. Uh, I've selected from the breeding colony the females that I'm going to put back in, and that was 20 of them. And then I've selected 25 youngsters that are actually better. They're, uh, well, come down here, Susie, and I'll show you. These are the older breeders and they're a little bit too yellow, too uh, gold, but we need quantity right now, so I'm gonna keep them. And these are the younger ones and you'll see they're paler. Uh, and you see there are fry in there. Our fish, after several generations on our system, they don't spit eggs because if you get, pro when we're processing them, if you spit the eggs, you've missed a breeding cycle. So there's strong natural selection uh, for females who hold. And they only let go of their, uh, they only spit when the fryer are ready to go. And that female had, one of the females in there had uh, fryer ready to go. Those are going to go back in the breeding vat uh, to, to grow up. We harvested from the vat 169 one inch fish. We had probably a couple hundred half inch uh, fish plus the ones that we let that ran through the net because we didn't get everything out of the, the 300 gallon breeding vat. We have several hundred fish already uh, in there, so we're starting to get production back up where it should be. Uh, I so these two females are going buckets of females are going to go to 300, and I'm going to do that now because I don't want them to get stressed anymore. So I'm going to take them down here and pour the females and fry off into the 300, which is now filling. Let's 
and gently release them. Make sure there are no fry in the bucket. Sometimes the fry stick to the sides. So I always check that. And so about a little over 50% of the breeder females are the color I want to produce good sky blue males. We are, all of our OB peacocks are descended from a box of mixed OB peacocks. We got in some small ones from a Florida fish farm in 2003 after Hurricane Claudette wiped out this greenhouse and which was the only one we had at time and, and killed most of our rainbow fish. We were pretty much a rainbow fish hatchery before that and we switched. Uh, we were already starting to do some live bears and some cichlids but we switched uh, strongly, to the, strongly to those after Hurricane Claudette. Uh, Hurricane Claudette destroyed this greenhouse. This is greenhouse one. We built greenhouse two, moved the surviving fish over and did it and then rebuilt greenhouse one. Okay, so now I've got the females put up. We've processed all the other fish and I've got potential breeder males here. Uh, so I'm going to go through and pick probably three males to go in with those females. Set up a couple buckets here. We put all we put up the males that I'd already uh, decided not to use as breeders. They're good fish. They're just not what I'm looking for in the strain, or they aren't the best. Okay, I've got two buckets of these. I don't know why. Oh, I know these. This bucket were the males in the breeder vat. There shouldn't have been that many. There are only supposed to be two. That means I didn't do a good job of sexing the little fish. He's nice. He's also nice, which you expect since they're breeders. That fish is a little too pale for what I'm looking for in a sky blue. And let's take a look at this guy. Uh, also a little bit pale. Let's compare him to these. Yeah. I like that fish better. So the, those two were not going to put in the breeding colony. Now let's go through these. That's a nice fish. We'll look at him again. He's nice. I really like that fish, but he's not a sky blue. I'm going to set him aside and I'm working on a sky blue red, so I may drop him in with those and look at him again when I'm processing. That's a nice young fish. We'll look at him again. Too much orange. Don't like him. Too young. Okay. Get some water. Like uh, any breeding program where you're working with aquarium strains, you need to get a good feel for for the fish and who's going to, especially on the female side where you don't get a lot of color to play with, you want to uh, pick those that are going to produce the best males. The other thing we do is quite a bit of inbreeding. Uh, you'll note we had uh, over 50 females, but we're only going to put uh, three males in there. And we do that every breeding cycle. And uh, if I'm real, if I have, for example, this male, if I decided to create a strain based on him, I would give him about 20 females and then mate him back to his daughters and his granddaughters and great granddaughters until I got a strain of fish that looked like that. Inbreeding is a great tool. We raise prize winning uh, mollies and uh, they're big healthy fish and we strong and we again with those we inbreed a lot. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick three breeders out of this. That's tough. 
Mm, I don't know. I want to look at both those again. Yeah, let me compare him to one of these. That's also tough. <laughs> I like them both. Yeah. And that's a little pale. Yeah. He's a nice fish, but I'm going to go with those three. And that one I just put in there, we have a, uh, somebody just ordered sky blue OB uh, peacock adults, a male, and I think three or four females. So I will ship him to that customer. So we have our three breeder males. Have our females set up. These males will go to the sale vat. And we're done with this fish today. Good fish keeping.